Song Talk Radio with Michael, Neil, Phil, and the gang. Welcome to Song Talk Radio. This is episode 289. This is a show with songwriters talking to other songwriters about the craft of songwriting. We share tips, tools, and techniques, and together we all become better at writing songs. I'm your host, Neil Modi, and with me are the part of this balanced breakfast members of the Song Talk Radio (laughs) action team. We have French Toast Phil. (laughs) <laughs> well, Marie, I'm uh, very happy to be here, how uh, you say, on the show. You do understand that French toast is American. <laughs> anyway. Well, that's why it's such a bad French <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> American with a bad French accent. American accent. 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 <laughs> All right, we have uh, Muffin Michael. Uh, muffin. How, how nice. <laughs> Not even a problem. You, get, you get to choose your own flavor. Just, you know, uh, I suppose. <laughs> You're a brand muffin. <laughs> You're a brand muffin. Michael exactly. Proudfoot, the brand muffin of Song Talk Radio. <laughs> He's the practical one. Yeah. <laughs> and on uh, social media tonight, we have uh, Maple Syrup Micah. Oh. Well, see, that's, that's way not better. Bad. That's yeah. not bad. Well, I could. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> and <laughs> I didn't know you didn't like muffins. What and uh, vit- vitamin C, Vanessa. <laughs> and, vi- and vitamin C, Vanessa. Yes, Vanessa's here. Yay, Vanessa's Vanessa. back. That was not, not bad, was it? Not Vegemite. Thought, 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 not Vegemite. Vitamin C. C. Vitamin C, Vanessa. I hope I didn't steal your thunder. Oh, no, no, perfect. Uh, uh, and, and, and finally on the tech board, we have Raisin Bran Rita. Oh, great. Join the health crowd. Because <laughs> all that stuff is good for you, right? Yeah, yeah. regular. All Raisin right. Brand Rita. Yes. <laughs> During the show, send in your comments and questions to at Song Talk Radio on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, or feedback at songtalk.ca for the email, and we'll share them with the audience. And please visit us, songtalk.ca. Find out how you can be a guest on the show. Tonight, a professional singer, songwriter, recording studio owner, and voice actor, Taylor Abrams, is on the verge of a breakout moment in a promising career. He was a top 40 finalist on Canadian Idol and has performed on stages across Ontario, including Dundas Square, the Mod Club, the Phoenix Concert Theatre, and large concerts, including the Festival of Lights, and as a closing performer for the Ontario Special Olympics. He has also written and produced musicals and music for animated series, including the theme for Fangbone, exclamation mark, uh, produced by Disney XD Worldwide, uh, one of the many cartoon series that Taylor plays a lead character in. He also wrote, performed, mixed, and assisted in directing songs and videos for Super Planet Dolan, garnering over 20 million views on YouTube and thousands of plays and downloads. After creating a spontaneous performance opportunity on the conference floor of Canadian Music Week, Taylor was soon contacted by legendary Grammy-winning producer and engineer Eddie Kramer, Jimi Hendrix, The Beatles, Carly, Carly Simon, David Bowie, Michelle Branch and many more, who wanted to produce and develop Taylor. Now close to the completion of his debut record of original songs, Eddie describes Taylor as a true artist and songwriting genius. For this forthcoming record, Taylor has received grants from both the Toronto Arts Council and Factor. Welcome back to the show, Taylor. Wow. Thank you, thank you. Last time you were on the show was August 25th, 2015. 2015. I have to look it up. It was a long time ago. And, and then you, you, were, you were partnered up with uh, Taylor and Bryn. Yep. Um, as a as a duo, which is uh, it, it, some of the best live performances we had on the show, I think. Oh, that's um, very yeah. sweet. Of you. It was, it was, it was really you. really excellent. And, and I run the studio with Bryn. You know, oh, he's right still on. a big part of my life. Oh, One right. of the songs on the album is actually a song that we would have done on this show uh, okay. called "You're My," and uh, I experimented with making a more pop friendly version of that. And oh. then Eddie was like, "Whoa, we got to do that." <laughs> All so. right then. Excellent. And you got all sorts of things under your belt, animation and voice mm-hmm. acting. and oh, You're not an animator, you're, you're a voice actor uh, uh, as well. Yeah, uh, voice acting primarily for cartoons. For cartoons. Yeah. Right on. How does one get into that? Uh, that's, a, that's a big question. I, I, I mean, for me, what I can say what my journey was. I was, uh, I was basically six years old when I begged my parents for an acting agent. Um, so from a very young age. Wow. Um, and, and my influence was like, Jim Carrey. I was just, mm. I saw The Mask and Ace Ventura and I was like, I just want to, you know, be one of those people who gets to be a child throughout their entire life, basically, <laughs> right was kind of how I saw it. Because um, I saw a lot of adults with their eyes glazed over trying to convince themselves that, yeah, you know, I, I, I've got a good life going, yeah. you know. <laughs> and uh, so, Ultimately, so I did a lot of on-screen stuff, but the last few years I started to really focus on voice acting primarily to make more time for my music, and you know, and just because, really, when it comes to on-screen acting, it's very hard for me to not just ham it up, mm. and mm. and I find it very hard to take a lot of dramatic acting seriously, <laughs> 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 you know, and to get paid for just like slightly like twitching your your left elbow or something like that, you know, it's it's too subtle for me. <laughs> Huh. You know, <laughs> okay, so does the um, 
voice acting uh, have any effect on the way you're approaching your songwriting in terms oh, definitely. Of, of how you handle your lyrics and that type of thing? Definitely. Um, yeah, I, that's that's another big question. Uh, as a uh, voice actor, you're thinking constantly about words and how to make... Pres- like Pat Patterson says, right? He talks about preserving the natural shape of the language. Um, he's a great songwriting coach. Yeah. And you mentioned on him on the show quite, quite a often. bit, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 And <laughs> you know, when I took a two day class from him, that was pretty much all that he was harping about for two days straight. And yeah. and you know, I'm very grateful that I that I took that because that profoundly affected my writing. And as a voice actor, again, it's very much about. I mean, you're manipulating the natural shape of the language because you're trying to surprise these casting directors. You know, mm. if your line is "I love you," you might go "I love you." You know, <laughs> um, whereas you, you wouldn't typically say it like that in real life. You wouldn't. You probably wouldn't sing it that way either. Or you might say. <laughs> you might. Or if you're a really arrogant character, you might go "I love you." I you know, you. like because so it's all about you, uh, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, you know, and, but typically in songwriting, you know, you're gonna want to make it like "I love you," right, or something right. like that, like the whatever the stress naturally falls on. Um, but I, I will say that in songwriting, uh, definitely it it makes me think about uh, songwriting in a much more conversational way, and, a, and in a way where yeah, you're you're thinking about words as these as these things that yeah ha- can have so much subtext and so many different ways of approaching them, and. Mm. Um, I feel like in the last little while, if you listen to a lot of Paul Simon stuff, sometimes mm. he outright just talks a line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and and I'm having a lot more uh, experimentation with that. I think as time goes on. So are well. you? So you're very conscious about where the stresses land. Oh, definitely. Are you ever playing with that? Like you ever try it one way and then try it a different way, or try it three or four different ways to see where it lands better? Or do you kind of intuitively know? I, at this point, I intuitively. Uh, no, a lot of times how, just because. Yeah, well, yeah. just because I've been writing for, um, s- literally since I was twelve or eleven years old, you yeah. know, uh, pretty obsessively. You know, mm-hmm. my favorite thing on earth is songwriting. So, but you know, there there's definitely uh, times where e- even on this this record I'm going to be putting out, there were one or two songs that. Uh, parts of them were written before I had taken that Pat Patterson thing, uh-huh. and uh, there there'll be some odd stresses here and there. Right. You know? But you didn't think we're all stresses at the time. No, I didn't. But, but now you're tuned to it more I, I'm more tuned to it. Mm. Uh, and But sometimes it's okay to break that rule, you know? Yeah. I, like, my whole spirit as a songwriter is I want to I wanna know a bunch of rules and a bunch of theories and a bunch of things, and and I want to find a, uh effective way to break all of them. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's... Um, like I wrote a song that the lyrics sound like they're absolutely stupid, like just me rattling off things that aren't true. Like I go like, Did you know that pelicans fly to a car they take to work? <laughs> like it's just what? No. It, like I like to write something that's s- stupid and the lyric doesn't even sing well, y- you know, <laughs> but just in the right way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Pleas- pleasantly awkward, right? <laughs> but but then ultimately it becomes a very sincere song because I rattle off all these silly things that, you know, you're kind of laughing at and then it's uh, did you know that anything's true when you lose your mind like when I lost you? So mm. then it's like, oh sh- shit. Okay. Right, so right. now we have to feel sorry for this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? I I, I like cool. finding ways to play with people's expectations and what they think something is and yeah. breaking that. And, and some of the, some of the I can't think of the song offhand right now, but there's one particular song I think from the '70s where the hook was like, like the syllable was completely on the other syllable on the wrong syllable, but it became the hook of the song. Right. You know what I mean? And it just well, I I would say definitely once you got into more alternative and new wave music and like Elvis Costello's uh, phrasing is kind of horrendous, but mm. but that's like <laughs> yeah. part of the energy yeah. of it, I guess. I I do think that ultimately the songs that stick with me the most are you know are the ones that Pat Patterson would say are kind of superior songs. Like, you know, mm-hmm. to me, you know, someone like Randy Newman, where, like, every word seems, even if they seem kind of stupidly simple, a lot of these songs, they're deceptively simple. There's a yeah. lot of care and thought put into each Does one Pat of those Patterson words. Pat Patterson actually say you have to do it this way or just something to be conscious of? I, I don't remember. I think it would be very bizarre if he said you have to do it this yeah, way. Yeah, I, I would think so. Um, but it, there is something to be said for the longevity of something. You know, yeah. Um, one one example, because no one remembers this song, this Katy Perry song that went. Uh, <laughs> I think it's Katy Perry. Okay. Unconditional, yeah. unconditional 
unconditionally, but you would never say unconditional. Yeah, that's right. right. So, like, unconditional. You feel it so yeah. much more right away. Yeah. Right. right. So mm. that's a quick example I go to with people to try and explain that. Um, and, you know, no one remembers that song, really, right? I, right? I heard it on the radio once, and I've never heard it since. Mm. Mm. So. There you go. What's your... Um, sorry, Michael. I was just going to... So w what is your process for songwriting? Do you start with lyrics? Do you have a set way, or do um, they come out in all different fashions? I, f I feel like it's morphed over the years, but I, I never really got that idea of... Let's write a lyric first and then try and, you know, pigeonhole the uh, music on top of that, you know. Mm. I I really like to treat it as this this flowing conversation where everything's happening at the same time. And and that comes from uh in university I took a free improvised music class at York University. Cool. And while I was there I developed this strange kind of improv that I would do where you know I might like like, just give me a couple words, and I'll do a quick example of this right now. Sandwich ladder. Sandwich ladder, so. Yeah. <laughs> climbing, climbing, climbing up the sandwich. Climbing, climbing, climbing up the sandwich. Ladder! <laughs> Is he gonna make it to the top? Is he gonna stop? Is he gonna cry? Cause he can see the whole world, and it's not what he expected up here. And he can't eat away these tears He can only get bigger Only get a little sicklier Oh no, oh no You know, so like <laughs> Amazing um, <laughs> But it's just me riffing, right? right and so yeah. what I would do is I'd end up doing something like that And I might go from the oh no to like uh, Like no, 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 no <laughs> Ooh, ooh, ooh. Like yeah. I like I'll just go into other songs and it becomes like this eleven minute medley where it's just my my brain do, oh, doing doing right. the stuff that it would do before the internet to entertain itself. Right, right. Yeah, you yeah. know? And you would record you would record all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go over it and try and yeah, le oh, yeah. pull out stuff that okay, th this could actually be yeah, more so, finessed into a song. So on my phone are thousands of little dictations yeah. where it's, you know, usually once a day I'm sitting down for five, six minutes and I'm just, uh, you know, like some kind, I, I, I might just start with a little guitar figure and, or there might be like something someone said that day and I'm like, yeah, that just sounds like a title of something. Let's see mm -hmm. if I can build that song. And I'll just, I'll do kind of a free improv thing to try and figure it out. But it, to be fair, there's more stops and starts in it because... Yeah because I'm trying to be a bit more deliberate rather than later on having to go through 20 minutes of, of audio. <laughs> Fair <laughs> you enough. Know? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, believe me, I, I don't know... I, I feel like I've got tons of great songs that will just maybe never be found by me. I have visions of paying other people to take those dictations and build the songs out of them and just <laughs> making, like, a whole record label based on my dictations. Cool. <laughs> That'd be a good way of doing it. Um, but yeah, and, and then, you know, I take that and then I listen to it after and I've got my Google Docs and I, I type it all in and I can pretty easily tell right away the standout lines and the standout thoughts and try and build something out of it. And then I mm. keep dictating, you know, uh, Bert Bacharach talks a lot about, you know, imagine this song like you're listening to it on the radio right there and then. It's like, what do you want to hear next, mm -hmm. you know? And um, and I try to do it like that. And, and I don't trust, because sometimes something feels awkward to me while I'm playing it or writing it. Um, but I'll, I'll still indulge that idea. I'll still dictate myself trying it out that way and, you know, start doing the dishes and listening to that back. And I'll be like, oh, actually, that works really well. Mm -hmm. You know, I can surprise myself that way, too. You want to push your, your own uh, envelope. Ex exactly. Well. If, if There's no joy in songwriting if you, if you know, if, if you've got it all figured out already. You know, yeah, and that's the awkward balance of art and commerce. That's right, because <laughs> <You know? laughs> no one wants to hear you push the envelope, really. So well, that's true. Yeah, everyone wants to hear what you've already done. In general, kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well. I've been. There's this uh, lovely uh, YouTube review series called. Uh, oh man, I watch him every night. Why am I forgetting his name? Uh, uh, Todd in the Shadows, and he just. Uh, he does these critiques on artist careers, and I, I find them very interesting, especially because he doesn't seem to have a super musical background. He's just listening to it as a, you know, kind of as a layman, you mm -hmm. know? And I, he plays a bit of piano, but he, he's trying to just, like, he'll take, like, a one-hit wonder, but he'll take their entire career right. and dig dig through it. And, like, that, that moment that led to, I get knocked down, but yeah. I get up again. 
you know, yeah. where they were this huge ba- band in uh, in England, like this really iconoclastic punk band. Yeah. Uh, for 15 years, and then suddenly that happened, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And, um, and that was pretty different from that, the early stuff, too, I think, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that was them trying to do something a, a bit more commercial, um, but in a way where they still maintained their fans, yeah. you know? Mm. Um, but any, anyway, I guess what I'm talking about is, like, e- you start to realize ways in which, w- watching enough of those where the follow-up single is the thing that dooms a lot of these acts. And mm. it could have just been they chose a terrible follow-up single. Um, it, it could have been their label were trying to make them do something that sounded more like the sequel to the first song. Right. And, and then that botched it for them. You know? Uh, yeah. it seems well, when you get to the point where you're trying too hard, then <laughs> it doesn't always work, right? Yeah. It's well, the famous phrase is, you know, you have 10 years to do your first record and then two months to do your second. Yep. You yeah. know, and yeah, it's. Sort of and um, I remember. Uh, a to be fair, that, these are a bunch of songs like that are would be on their debut record, right? Right. So right. Yeah. ideally, when you're putting out your debut record, you have a sensation of, okay, I've got a few strong songs, you know? Um, and maybe whatever I think is the monster hit, release that second or third. Mm. So that. And, but unfortunately, what happens to some of these artists is those first two singles tank, and then they're like, well, I guess, all right, this is my last shot, and I'm probably going to be a one-hit wonder. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Which is not bad. If you've only got one great song, I would love to be a great. one-hit wonder. Are you sure. kidding me? Yeah. 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 Like, There's one more hit than most of us. I've been us, listening right? to a bunch of Nick Lowe lately, because I'm seeing oh, him. Oh, what a master, eh? Yeah, yeah. And I'm seeing him next week, and I'm just like, oh, man. I mean, yes, he had a few other hits technically, but really he's mainly known for Cruel to Be Kind, and I'm like, mm. I would be down. Peace, love, that. and understanding. Oh, sorry, that, oh, yeah. but that, 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 that wasn't a hit, right? That was on the Bodyguard soundtrack, so it, Well, that was a hit for, uh, um, Costello. For us, for Elvis Costello. Yeah. yeah. Oh. But it's great, it's a great yeah. song. So speaking about debut records, you've got one coming out. Yeah. And so these two songs you're performing tonight are, are off that record? Um, yes, uh, yes. That, that's what it seems like, so... Uh, <laughs> you <not> it, sure? <laughs> well, the Quarter Life Crisis one, what's odd about that is basically it was just a demo was all that was uh, recorded for that, but there's something raw and interesting about it, and it'll probably be that version of it that's <laughs> that's on the on the record. We'll see. It, it might feel a little out of place, but um, I'm going to find that out as we go. But regardless, I have a music video coming out for Quarter Life Crisis in, oh, about, nice. um, in about a week, so please follow me on... Instagram and Facebook and whatever the heck you want in order Ooh. to uh, be kept abreast of that. Okay. All right. And uh, you want to set up the song, like what, yeah. uh, how it came about? Oh well, Quarter Life was largely written after this whole journey with Eddie. So what happened was Eddie uh, found me at uh, Canadian Music Week. I saw a guitar at the Elma Combo booth, and I just asked, "Hey, can I just like play two songs or something like that?" Because for some reason I didn't even make it into the actual uh, CMW that that year, hmm. you know. And then it's like, and then Eddie Kramer's the one who fixed me, so it doesn't look very good on the CMW. It's like <laughs> hey, he's not good enough, you know. Um, and so I I played a couple songs there, and so that really got my me into songwriting gear again because I had spent years just writing uh, some of this kids music and some of these other things that I was enjoying that were paying the bills and also uh, you know constantly doing voice acting work I had a voice acting gig that literally uh, kept me on set five days a week like the a really strange situation to be in and and kind of what I was trying to avoid you know why I got into voice acting is let me you know do something in my PJs four hours once a week and pay the bills you know (laughs) Um, and so, but with all that done, it was like, okay, I'm going to really uh, take songwriting seriously, and, and this guy believes in me. So that's, that was a huge vote of confidence. And uh, so I, I basically built the record, and then um, there was kind of this, this odd little gap where we're trying to shop the album around and, you know, uh, Lord knows what else. And uh, I just, I was actually trying to make like a, like I did years and years ago, like a joke triple album. In, in a couple months, just to right. just to offload some of these other ideas that I had, because <laughs> I have way too many ideas, um, and so and and that fell through. But there were a few nice things that I did demo with my band, and one of them being this quarter life crisis song. And when I played that for Eddie, and I was like, I'm going to put this on another like triple album collection I'll put out before the main album comes out. What do you think? And he's like, I think you got to save this song for the main album. It's it's too good. Nice. And so. Um, so it goes like this, and it's really just, um, especially earlier this year and a few years in the years 
while I was making this with Eddie, it, it was like I was really experiencing this quarter life crisis sensation of like, what do I have to show for my life? You know, I'm pretty much the age when Hendrix died, yeah. and <laughs> I don't have anything to show for it. You know, <laughs> um, well, you know, obviously we're always our own worst critics and all that, but yeah. but it was also just me really looking at. Well, let's talk about the song after I play it. Yeah. How about? All right. sure. Hopefully my throat isn't too dry. You can laugh at it. You can laugh and watch the show until you go. You can drink till it, till it looks a little strange, a little slower. They can say relax. And you might find a night with a girl on your chest where all seems right. But the more you see, the less you know, the more it hits home. Ooh, what if, what if, what if they're the words I can't unhear? What if? What if I did everything wrong? What if, what if Running round missing the song But who dares sing along To the quarter life, quarter life Quarter life crisis Here we go to life, quarter life Quarter life crisis Here we go to life, quarter life Quarter life crisis, here we go to life, quarter life, quarter life crisis, here we go. Ooh, you can dance to it, watch your boots wear down your youth to some brainless hit. You can scream at it, write a tirade till your heart aches. Please, please live and let live. They can say it gets better. Soon you'll be in your autumn sweater, a family and a book by your side. But the more you read, the less you know, the more it hits home. is really gone what if what if everybody's someone's pawn what if what if there's some money making scheme they bend until it seems like it's the dream oh quarter life quarter life quarter life crisis here we go to life quarter life quarter life crisis here we go to life Quarter life crisis, here we go to life, quarter life, quarter life crisis. Half of a quarter life is an eighth, I thought by then I'd find my place. Spent ten years just keeping the faith, now everyone's saying goodbye. Half of a quarter life is an eighth, I thought by then I'd find my place. Spent ten years keeping the faith, now everyone's saying goodbye. This world will soon be gone What if, what if It's too late to sing along What if, what if All these questions are to blame Yet in the question is my name I feel my name deep in the quarter life Quarter life, quarter life crisis Here we go to life, quarter life Quarter life crisis Here we
could be sooner or later the quarter life, quarter life. Ooh. Yeah, Great. very nice, very nice. Brilliant, sir. And where did this uh, idea for this song come from? Uh, I think it was literally a case of just someone had said Quarter Life Crisis to me earlier in the day, and I'm like, the how, first how the heck is that not really like a known song yet? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Why is that not a thing? Yeah. yeah. Um, I've never heard that phrase before. I mean... Well, I have, but that's because I've okay. sung the song a lot. Um, <laughs> well, okay. But before you wrote the song, had you heard it before? Uh, vaguely. But yeah, yeah okay. I, it's like, I, I feel for millennials. I want to pander to millennials. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I I, uh, I think that there's a lot of things about what millennials are dealing with which are talked about, but not really sung about or expressed. And so I'm trying to find a way with this album to largely um, communicate difficult or unusual subjects um, with a you know with a bit of a 70s charm which is very hard to do in 2019 yeah, you know? yeah. I, it was incredibly expensive to try and do this right <laughs> I recognize that 70s you know classic singer songwriter you know Paul Simon that that yeah. stuff in your Jim in Crochet. The work. yeah the, a little yeah, bit Jim of Jim Crochet, Crochet. Yeah. yeah I think it was like you know I I'd heard operator around that time and I was really getting into that and I was like wow what a song what a great tune eh? yeah and um, so it was a bit of that, like the... Uh, Something using about a the guitar more, playing, yeah. especially. Um, the, I'm, I'm using this very constant pattern. I wanted to make a song where it's pretty much the whole progression the same way through, which is pretty rare for me, mm. um, to really drill in this sense of like, okay, the quarter-life crisis is here. It's not going away. You just got to sit with it. Here we go. You know? Right, right. Um, it's an interesting um, structure because you're, you almost have like a, this really, really long chorus where you have the what if, what if, and then you have the quarter life crisis. Yeah, what if is really pre, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is more. Of, it pre is course, more of a yeah. pre. It's it's tricky because when I'm just playing it on my own like this, I haven't figured out the dynamics of playing it on my own, and mm. I'm tra kind of experimenting as I'm singing it here. And because if that's why I was trying to do it softer so that it'd be more obvious once I hit the quarter life. Okay, yeah, here's the yeah. chorus. Because yeah. because uh, you know I've had some people be like, oh, is the what if song? Yeah, it's a good song. I'm yeah, like, no, yeah. it's quarter life crisis. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, that's always interesting. We always talk. About you know what to call a song because people will tell you what the song is called. Yeah. Because if people say, "Oh, it's quarter life crisis," then it's quarter life crisis. But if people say it's what if, it's just know. what I, if it's such a worse title. I, I know. Yeah, I, quarter like, life crisis. You remember that? Yeah. 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 What I mean, if it's could, a quarter life crisis? You could put what if in brackets. <laughs> and what if we take a small break right now? Oh. Ooh, um, nice segue for the halftime little break. Uh, who's got the halftime show queued up there, Mr. Michael? For those of you just joining us, you're listening to Song Talk Radio, streaming on songtalk.ca, and tonight we're talking to Taylor Abrams. And uh, you just missed a if you're just joining us, you just missed a fantastic song. So be sure to go back and listen to this uh, show from the very beginning. How dare you? Or I check know, out the YouTube. How rude. Yeah, exactly. Or the YouTube where how you can actually rude. see him playing as well as hear it. But don't forget, we love to hear from you even during the show, so feel free to interrupt us. Just, you know. Don't be rude about it. <laughs> so you share had your thoughts. Have someone bolt into the studio and, and ask a question? It happens for that. all the yeah. time. We're still waiting That's for why that. we have this taser here. So <laughs> share your Twitter. thoughts and your questions with us at Song Talk Radio on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, or send us a good old-fashioned email to feedback at songtalk.ca. We will share your thoughts and answer your questions here on the show sort of live. And coming up on Song Talk Radio in the next couple of weeks, uh, next week, September 17th, we're going to be talking about the new movie Yesterday, which imagines a world in which the Beatles never existed. And then the week after that, September 24th, piano pop singer songwriter Alex Worms. So if you, uh, oh, and, not so, and if you're in the Toronto area, please join us at our next Song Talk meetup on Sunday, September 22nd from 1 to 4. So it's in the afternoon, Sunday afternoon at the Transact Club at Brunswick and Bloor. It's free to join on meetup.com and it's free to attend the meetup. So stop by songtalk.ca for the link to the meetup. All right. Over to you, Neil. Thank you, Michael. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I, I really I really like this song, the, the What If song. The, <laughs> the quarter life. <laughs> Taylor I mean, just stormed you know, out. Obviously, quarter life is a, is a more appropriate yeah. title. Mm. But um, yeah, I just I love the way it builds. I mean, it, it does have this great existential mm -hmm. message to it. 
Yeah, and, right? I, and, and, I and it's not to... it's not pandering necessarily. Yeah. It's not. It's just kind of stating. Yeah, it's just asking the question. What if? Yeah. Right? And really, I mean, as I went along, some of these what ifs, I'm like. These aren't even what ifs in my mind. I, I'm, I'm pretty clear about some of these as realities. They are, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but just for those who, you know, if they are, are still, still what ifs, then they can resonate with it. <laughs> right. I, I was wondering how, how long did the writing process take? Was there a lot of back and forth? Oh, with this the was super fast. This yeah. was like, this. I can probably find you the exact dictation file where I kind of figure out the whole thing pretty much in eight, Damn. ten minutes. Really? Wow. Because yeah. ah, a well. true work of art takes at least 45. That's true. Bloody <laughs> <laughs> Tell that to. Uh, Leonard Cohen. Yeah. Oh. It took like 45 years to write a song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there, there, like, yeah, there were some songs that were 10 years for him. And I, yeah, uh, yeah. M- my favorite Cohen album title is 10 New Songs. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah. it's going to instantly be dated. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what do you mean? It's great. <laughs> yeah. I do like the way the, um, the first uh, What If section, the way it ties into the um, Quarter Life. Goes running around uh, missing the song, but who dares to sing along to the Quarter Life, Quarter Life, which I thought yeah. was really cool. Um, yeah, like it just sort of bleeds into the chorus. Yeah, which I thought was really, that was a really, I love it when they people sort of do those kinds of the yeah, subtle Yeah, I, I, I needed to make everything lean in somehow. And, it's, yeah. and, and you know, it's a song that, um, especially if you don't know the title of the song going into it, mm-hmm. you know, you can laugh at it. And it's like, what is the it that we could laugh at? It's like, this, you're, you don't know really what the song is about mm-hmm. uh, until you get to the chorus. So I wanted to make that extra clear. Yeah. I think. Well, in some ways, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect title, it's a perfect chorus, because it does encapsulate everything else about the yeah. song. Because it is, yeah, it's a little bit here and there, mm-hmm. pulling at this tension, pulling at that tension, but it sort of gets summarized by a quarter yes. life crisis that, that yeah. kind of idealizes the whole yeah. thing, right? I wanted to talk to you about working with Eddie. Yeah. Um, and um, how, like, did he sort of help you uh, tweak and shape the songs at all? Or does he sort of just uh, take the way they are? Or? He uh, he largely uh, was very happy with the songs. He would make some some kind of uh, broad bits of advice sometimes, um, or he'd be like, "Great song, now ch- lob a minute off it." Right. And I would like, he tell you where, or he just give, leave that up to you? I, he'd leave it up to me. I mean, he he um, he gave me a lot of trust and a lot of faith throughout this project, and because he knew that I'm, you know, I'm an artist. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, uh, a pop star who you can just put words in my mouth and I'll hmm. regurgitate them nicely. Hmm. I, I'm, I am my own artist for better or for worse, you know. <laughs> and uh, so we worked, but but there were also times where he had some very specific suggestions for some of my songs, um, like little things, and I, and they would be brilliant and and really help. You know, people don't think of Eddie Kramer as a as a songwriter, right? They think of him as a producer and an engineer, but you know, he has a very good, intimate understanding of songs. And his philosophy is very much about getting down to the essence of a song, mm. you know, just cutting out the BS. You know, I had... But but at the same time, he loves songs that are uh, experimental and cool and, and a little out there, you know? And that's what drew him to my project, is all of my songs are very different. Mm. In fact, Quarter Life is probably the most contemporary and repetitive out of mm. <laughs> any the, of the my... The most poppy? <laughs> yeah, out of the songs on the record, except maybe this one that's like... I. Uh, this I won't put up with it one and his only thought with that was to say I won't put up with it a few more times and like why don't you say it here as well and I'm like okay great idea let's right. do that too so the songs that made the album did he help you choose from the ones that you had or oh, did yeah. you come in I, with I oh. had I had uh, these SoundCloud playlists of like 50, 60 different demos um, and in fact I even was imagining this as a very different album initially it was going to be this this thing, this concept album where I was pretending I was a pop star from the 70s and this was my greatest hits package. Mm, oh. <laughs> and, you know, like I had a song about um, trying to warn Elvis to take better care of himself. Oh. That was like a big hit. <laughs> yeah. And like it was it was going to be much more jokey and, and silly and stuff. And I thought, well, I mean, Eddie's like the supreme 70s producer, so it would make a lot of sense. That should excite him. And But I gave him all those songs and I gave him a bunch of more, you know, uh, raw folk songs. I'm like, I listen to these ones too, but pff, whatever. And he's like, he tended to lean towards it's those ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's it's um, something that I've that I used to do a lot when I was younger. Is you kind of lean on humor in in some ways, and it's almost mm-hmm. a way of it's a bit of a protection thing. Like by being a joke, uh, making a joke, you can sort of um, exactly. put a bit of defense. And, yeah, yeah. And I've started to realize how 
how much that robs the audience sometimes. Yep. Um, like people, you know, they'll, they'll use like this really kind of, oh, aren't I kind of, isn't this kind of a wacky title for the album? And that really doesn't do a service to you, I don't think, as an artist. I think, um, you know, being that kind of clever, clever really pushes people away. And actually, uh, Bruce, who, you know, who's one of our founders, he actually called me at it when I first met him because I was, I used to do that all. And he said, stop doing that. Mm -hmm. Start being honest. And he was the first person in my like 45 <laughs> years to ever do that. Mm -hmm. But it was like, yeah, 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 crap. You have to sort of like not making a joke to actually be honest. Yeah. And I think that can be a, a tough thing for an artist. It's a lot and, harder and, to do. Yeah. And a lot of the best comedians are just honest. They're, yeah. They're actually just yeah. comedy. Here's a great definition of it is saying the truth faster than people are expecting it. Oh right, sure. Right, so you <laughs> yeah. just kind of take them off guard yeah. and surprise and, them. And, and they, like, they always oh. say that comedy comes from really, really comes from a place of pain. Like the best comedy yeah. comes from yeah. places where you're really hurting. Totally. Right. And so you know, I I have some funny songs, but um, and you know, some children's music which like borderlines on funny, but mm. absolutely, you know, the, this stuff is uh, it tends to be stuff where even if I am going into a humorous place, sometimes I want to do it um, because it's authentic to me, mm. um, mm -hmm. and because that excites me. Right. So I totally know where you're coming from. Like and 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 that's why it's like let's hide behind a, a character. Right. So that'll be fun. And it's like ugh, unfortunately like I I had this song that I was so nervous about recording or doing anything with. So that's why I buried it on this second uh, playlist and it was a song about my experiences throughout my life with gender dysphoria and uh, all these ways in which I'd ignored that and not really uh, talked about it. Mm. And so Eddie heard that and he's like, oh, you gotta do that. And I'm like, damn it! <laughs> no! And, and, and I, I wrote, like, I told a bunch of people, okay, I'll write a song about this because I, you know, I, there was like a course I took and I actually, I, I got up in front of 100 people and, and spilled the beans about this for the first time and then all these people were so supportive and I'm like, okay, I'll write a song about this. And then I, Farted, farted it out in five minutes. A lot of these are things that I kind of farted out in five minutes, and then it took two years to produce them properly. And, yeah. um, but and I was like, okay, well, I'll write a better song later. And then just I was like, no, I don't know. It was just kind of raw and in the moment. Mm. And um, I I did clean it up a little bit, but it said what needed to be said. You won't hear that song today, folks. No, but. no. <laughs> is it on the album? It is. It is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I, I want to zone in on a, on, a, on a craft aspect of the, the way you sang this song because in the recording, in your in your chorus, you go quarter life, quarter life, quarter life crisis. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Go lands on the downbeat of the next bar, and quarter life. The next quarter life starts on the downbeat of the bar, and there, and in the in the recording, I feel like there's two vocal tracks going, and there's like an overlap there. But when and I was wondering how you were going to deal with that live. Um, well, you know, well, kind of like what I just did yeah, here. I, I just, just go like you, goater life. Is yeah, you, you sort of went goater life, right? Which was very very clever. I thought that was like that was really clever because you get you get the go. I mean, and you know the quarter because you've heard the quarter before, and yeah. you know that's people, coming again. People are smart. They they. they are gonna think, okay, the words probably go, right? right. You, yeah. you would never say, here we eat, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Here we milk, quarter life, quarter life, here we milk, quarter life. Yeah, yeah. Here we fly, here we, yeah, yeah. right, yeah. And I say, here we go, just on its own at the end of the chorus. Yeah, so yeah. In, right. in case you're well. really in dense. In case you really, you it's like, can get oh, okay. it on those times. Yeah. One of the things yeah. I loved about the song is that the melodies are, they're, they're, they're beautiful, but they're complex. They're not da 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 mm -hmm. You know, they're very kind of complex. Was there a lot of time spent uh, sort of melding the, um, um, and arriving at the melodies? Uh, again, not really. It, it was very intuitive. I, mm -hmm. It's like, I've, I've just drilled songwriting and listening to music into my mind so much. I've got a supercomputer up here that I can't even explain half the time. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just doing its thing, you know? Um, but I would, but I would say that there's always this thing in the back of my head where I'm almost like taking data from a few different songs and I'm sticking them together, and I'm like, yeah, that feels like a a, a good idea to see what it would be like to take that song and that song and you know fuse them and make a new one. So with this song, you know, here here's the thing is I I'm not sure how much artists should even admit that because of how well, weird copyright law is yeah. now. Yeah. But, uh, That's true. <laughs> well, you, you, you're either putting that process in the foreground or you're letting it yeah, work and, in the background. And, right? and actually, my, my whole thing is to be as 
honest and uncomfortably honest as possible. You know, once I saw Jim Carrey, who's like my soul brother from a, another mother, you know, um, just be as like, screw it, you know, nothing's real, and and like be that wacky mm. and but but honest. I was just like, I'm just gonna do that in my daily life and let people, you know, leave it up to them to make sense of me for themselves. Right, you know? right. Like sometimes I've I've gone down the street wearing you know some some lady clothes and it's like it's like I feel like I'm forwarding a movement just by existing that way. It's kind of nice. Right, it's like right. killing two birds with one stone. I'm like texting someone and I'm like forwarding. <laughs> <laughs> and you're comfortable. Uh, Multitasking. Yeah. And cool, cool and comfortable. Exactly. You know. Um, but uh, I digress. Uh, so the two songs were probably. Uh, a gentle on my mind. Oh, yeah. You know? Da, 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 da. Um, so that's maybe where a bit of that picking pattern came mm. from and that and that sensation. And also the idea of like you you start on one chord and then you kind of go to another chord which walks down yeah. a bunch mm -hmm. and then returns you back to the first chord. Yeah. Da, 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 on your couch, right? Mm. And and just my, my love of a lot of that Glenn Campbell stuff and, and a lot of the great uh, Dolly Parton uh, songs and um, so it was that and then yeah I, it was probably like Operator and then mm. like oh yeah and blend that with something really modern you know right you know and just trying to find a neat sandwich to put together mm. and you just stick that in, in your mind and um, and it barfs out a song. <laughs> you, know? right. you make Lovely. it sound so as long easy. As, as long as you're practicing it, because sometimes you, I write some terrible things, you know? I think overall I've well, probably gotten better. That's part of the better. practice, though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah it, it's a practice, and, and I, I, it's such a shame to me when people don't realize that, you mm -hmm. know, when they just treat it as, oh, well, I just write what I feel, and, like, that was really authentic, that was really honest, so I can't touch it anymore, you know? Yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. but you're, you think that you're getting your message across, but... That word is falling on a totally wrong syllable, so n no one even understands what you're saying. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you're this whole thing that you're feeling is getting, you know, it's getting hit by a brick wall. It's not even getting to anyone. That's the difference, I think, between people who do something as a hobby, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a great yeah. thing to do as a hobby. But if you really want to master the craft of something, you need to be able to pull yourself out of the process and look at your art somewhat objectively and yeah. go, well, does that line, is that line good enough? Yeah. Elvis Costello said he has a song, he has songs that last two years because he's just going, I can't find that line. He's just got to mm. find the right line. He throws different words at it and just exactly. goes, no, that's it. Mm. Yeah, sometimes you know you're writing that type of song where it's like, okay, whatever the last line is in this chorus is the ti has to be the title of the song and I've figured it all out up to there. And then, yeah, exactly. You're just yeah. like just empty. Yeah. <laughs> waiting to plug your, your that mind in. is empty for yeah, like two yeah. months. Yeah, you know. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, hear another song. Okay. Indeed. We're we running out of time. <laughs> What's sure. this one? Uh, do uh, this is set? fall. Fall. Yeah, and it's fall now, so it just seemed like it'd be weird not to do it. So this is one that um, uh, I'll tell you more about how it was written afterward. Let's okay. just do it. Coming down like an anvil on my head My hopes are put to pasture And the gate is locked and set I've counted all my blessings But they won't get me out of bed Saying so long to summer again You were my antidote But you weren't ready yet I could see you in your short jeans Counting dreams with me instead The quiet in these parts Don't stop the voices in my head From saying every trail I find I'll just regret Now I don't believe anymore In anything Belief is just a game I play to help me fall asleep I've heard the quiet cooing of the lonely morning dove Seasons of sorrow, seasons of sorrow Why'd I ever fall? See you 
speeding along Staring straight ahead with a laugh so dead You're a missile firmly locked There's some prize on the horizon line Close but never touched Knowing you don't even want it all that much You told me you were creaking in one night While he was on the phone You dropped your bag of groceries As the anvil took your home In a golden man to find his rust Rattles to the bone Whispering memories to a floozy Up and to below Oh, now I don't believe anymore In anything Belief is just a game we play To help us fall asleep We've heard the quiet cooing of the lonely morning dove Seasons of sorrow, seasons of sorrow Why'd I ever fall in love? The minor nine played with a. <laughs> Gotta love the minor nines, aren't they? Just a fatter one than that. Yeah, than that guy. it's a jazz chord. Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's just a, it's it's a chord. It's a we, chord. Why we gotta do all this nationalist stuff? No, with yeah. no, no. You're right. You're right. Labels Chords. labels don't help us. <laughs> so, Michael, what do you think? Uh, I was kind of caught up in that. That was really uh, the again the the music the the guitar playing is really uh, fun. I don't hear that enough mm -hmm. these days, so it's really mm -hmm. cool to hear it now. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think why I do finger picking so much is just because I was such a loner throughout when I was really learning guitar, and I was like trying to sound like a full band, even though I wasn't. You know, right. trying to just make it as entertaining as possible for people. You know, and and I figure if I can entertain people a ton and sneak in something meaningful and thoughtful at the same time, then cool. Yeah, even the little licks in between chords were really kind of original. I, I, re I just really enjoyed it for that, especially. Thank you. Yeah, I, the funny thing is a lot of my guitar skill I got within the first three, four years of playing guitar, and then it just kind of plateaued. plateaued. And, I, and I got more interested in songwriting. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but, when, but when you have that, that basis of, of the the proficiency with the instrument that supports your songwriting yes, in a it does. fantastic yeah. way doesn't it it helps like, a lot yeah. and and i'm sure i'm my songwriting is also uh, limited as well in a certain way i, I want to get better at uh, piano and i want to find whatever the next level of uh, guitar playing is for me to learn but i'd have to like take one on one classes with bruce coburn or something like that which <laughs> would uh, yeah. probably not be that feasible but mm -hmm. we'll see well cuz i mean i i grew up listening to jim crochet and you know just, just loved his stuff, mm -hmm. but he very often had two guitarists yes. on his stuff. Yes, and I, the incredible blend with two guitars, the best blend that I've ever heard with just two guys playing a six-string guitar at the same time. Yeah, at, at first you don't realize it's two, and then mm -hmm. I remember as, as I, got, I got to a certain point and went, oh, there's two guitars. That's I never knew that till now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, there's this live clip of them doing Operator. Yeah, That's isn't that like great? That's the best blend of two acoustics I've ever heard. Yeah. We, we, had a, we had a guest way back when, remember Gary Woods? Oh, yeah. He was Gary an instrumental Woods. guitarist. He never sang or anything like that, but he used like partial capos on his guitar. Oh, yeah. Where you're just, you're just pinning down like three of the strings out of the six, and it sounds like bloody two guitars going yeah, on. Yeah, he's so amazing. Yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff, yeah. right? So I, I've dabbled a bit with different tunings and stuff like that as well. Mm -hmm. Um you know, it, it, it's life so so far has been so much about getting ready for this release and promoting stuff. When, mm -hmm. Whenever there's a lull and I'm kind of properly in the cycle of the Canadian music industry, then mm -hmm. 
then I'll I'll learn some new things. Yeah. A couple of <laughs> the things. lyrically, it was um, a lot of this brought uh, brought to mind. Um, uh, Tom Waits and the way oh, yeah? he handles sort of uh, mm. some of his images mm. and sort of the way he handles sort of his um, yeah like this wasn't you had a lot more sort of poetry here a hat uh, full of rain <laughs> I'm looking straight ahead with a laugh so dead you're a missile firmly locked um um, and a golden man to find his rust rattled to the bone. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, right. that's, yeah, it's kind of a bit more t- Tom Waitsian, which I which I loved. What's mm. fun is that this was, again, a song written very quickly, um, it, but I was actually trying to write a joke song initially. Um, wow. What I did was um, I was uh, I was watching a show called The Ozarks on Netflix, which is oh, like, right. yeah. you mm-hmm. know, like like the small town drama with the drugs and everything. And, and I was, so I wanted to write like a soap opera country song. And uh, and it was it was August, but it felt like fall had hit that day. Just it seemed to come mm-hmm. prematurely. And fall always gives this very peculiar sensation in me um, of of yeah, like things dying and um, and the awkwardness of all that. And um, and also because I was so anxious about my album, it was, it was just the sensation of oh man, like another summer's gone and I don't have this thing out and right. just feeling so useless. So. I was coming from from that, and I was really just trying to write a joke song. And there were a couple different lyrics, and I all I had to do was change a couple words, and then it became this this like haunting heavy mm-hmm. song. Wow. So it used to be like fall is coming down like an anvil on my head. I'm like anvil, like that's like a Looney Tunes thing, right? Right. right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my hopes are put to pasture, and like imagine it with an accent, and then it's right. Yeah. Song. My hopes are put to pasture, and the gate is locked and set. Um, it was a, uh, you were my antidote, but you weren't ready yet. I could see you in your short jeans, herding sheep with me instead. Oh. <laughs> I just yeah, yeah, changed yeah. that to count and dreams. Count and dreams. A little bit more Gloom disparity yeah. and, uh, what is it, uh, the great famous uh, Hee Haw song, Gloom disparity and... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just not up on my hee haw. <laughs> <laughs> but he wrote a song that was kind of like that. A couple, but things not are, really a couple of things are really like in the chorus. Um, and I'll tell you what I, don't, what I don't like about the chorus. But first, um, I heard the quiet cooling of a lonely mountain dove. The melody there. Morning dove, yeah. You know, the, uh, lonely mountain morning dove. Um, the melody is really beautiful there. The chord choices there were fascinating. I don't know mm-hmm. exactly what the chords were there, but they, they introduced this amazing tension. And then you can, and then I expected that to resolve right away. But, but I got but more you tense. Didn't. You got yeah. more tense with Seasons of Sorrow. Seasons of Sorrow, you kept it going. And you, then you, you have Elton John in. to thank for that because he, yeah. he had a few yeah. hits where he had these really tense, long choruses. Like Philadelphia right. Freedom, I think, oh, is yeah. an incredible chorus. Like his, his, Peak chorus, like the one, maybe the best thing he ever wrote, and and it, like I still can't wrap my mind around that, you know, yeah. writing something that. So I guess that was an attempt at making a longer form chorus. Yeah, and it totally works. We actually talked yeah. about totally what works. those chords were because they were quite interesting, um, actually. Yeah, from where I was sitting, I just saw the back, so it was driving me crazy. <laughs> I'm doing that, well, got it on film. <laughs> well, the first That's half good. is a lot like the verse, right? right. So you've. <laughs> And then you know, F minor, and then this like, it, it's it's this eleven chord, which is my go-to. Oh, you're just uh, making up shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what songwriting is? Yeah. So it's like I'm playing with a capo on, but for to indulge my my mind and transposing and stuff. Yeah. So like E minor nine, and then like an F over G. Okay. And when, what, right. What's the bass key signature? Like, what's the bass chord of the? Like, what, what chord does the chorus start on? Uh, it starts on E minor. It starts on E minor. Yeah. So then going to an... and and so yeah, it's kind of like walking down almost. So that's the transition, and right. then and then you're to A minor, and then you're to B minor. So yeah. you're walking up now, C to D. Yeah. And then I'm going to B minor again, but. I, but it, so I'm holding off on going to the E minor, which is where you want to go after you yes, hear a D, and you've been yeah, right. walking up a bunch of chords in a right, row. Right. I hold off on that, and then I finally go to it, and then and then I do, go yeah. to this walk down, and I'm falling on fall. Why'd I ever fall? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. The one thing I don't like about the chorus. <gasps> Now oh, I, look now, at the time. We gotta go. <laughs> yeah, we gotta look very quickly. <laughs> go now, now I don't believe anymore in anything. 
little too nihilistic for the song, I think. Okay. Just a little bit nihilistic. I, I, I love that. You're yeah, wrong. Yeah, well. That's a song full of minor chords. What yeah. do you expect? It, it definitely expect sounds balance. like something that could be on like a Hot Topic t-shirt. You know, belief is just a game I play to help I love that line. Asleep. I love I that it. line. But the first line is no. a little too nihilistic. I uh, know. I loved it. I thought it was great. I always, <laughs> you should have the music know. because oh, I want to I want to hear criticism, please. Yeah. No, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Um, the, the thing's done now. I, I did, yeah, yeah, I did consider enough. that. Um, it's perfect. It's back, perfect. Back in the day. It's perfect. I love it. <laughs> Neil's know. wrong. It's okay. He's okay, we can turn off Phil's microphone now. Let's move <laughs> on with the show. Thank All you. Right. All right. Oh, Is that it? That's my job. Yeah, yeah. that's what, that's what <laughs> the music <laughs> means. Somewhere. We've only yeah, been doing it, this for five years. Let's oh, talk about this some more. Okay, that's all time we have tonight, unfortunately, oh. on Song Talk Radio. Special thanks to our guest, Taylor Abel. Woo! Awesome stuff. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Please send us your impressions on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at Song Talk Radio. Send us an email, feedback at songtalk.ca. Check out our YouTube channel for live performance videos. We've got two of them tonight and full episodes. And please stop by the Song Talk site at songtalk.ca. Subscribe today to the Song Talk Radio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher.com, Spotify. Podcast Addict, probably many others. Don't forget to sign up for our free newsletter on the website. You can also find links to all the products, books, and web services we mentioned on the show on our resources page. And again, if you're in the Toronto area, please join us at our next Song Talk Meetup, Sunday, September the 22nd from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Transact Club. It's free to join on meetup.com. Stop by songtalk.ca for the link. Uh, thank you to Micah and to thank Vanessa you, Micah. for yeah. handling our social thank media you, thing. And on the tech board thingy, Rita, thank you very much. Thank you, Rita. And most thank of all, we'd like to thank you, our devoted listener. You can follow me at neilmody.com. You can follow Phil. On the Phil Emery on Twitter. You can follow Michael if he's on the grid this week. No, you're not following me. Uh, Mr. Micah. <laughs> at Jimmy Micah on Instagram. And Rita, I think, is off the grid. She's shaking her head. Yeah. And what about Vanessa, Vanessa? of course. Sunny underscore Vanessa on Twitter. Sunny I think. underscore Vanessa. And uh, Taylor, your favorite social yes. media channel? Yeah, um, I would go to Taylor EH Official. That's my Instagram. And um, also just uh, Taylor Abrahams. Uh, on Facebook, I've got. Uh, I could plug a bunch of things. We'll add that in the notes, I guess, for the yes, we will. For the thing mm-hmm. of Bob show on September fifteenth. Come where? Oh, uh, 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 To uncovered. It's at uh, Revival Bar. Cool. Revival. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. And stop by the website songtalk.ca. Browse past shows. Find out you can be a guest and keep on writing. Good night, and everyone. Rockin'. Bye.